العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So, الحمد لله. What month is this? Muharram. Um, month of Muharram, ما شاء الله. It's the first month of the Muslim calendar year. And yes, Muslims don't celebrate all this, you know, anniversaries and commemorations. I remember, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Quran mentioned it. He says, "وذكرهم بأيام الله." Allah says, "Remind them of the days of Allah." Allah takes the days and says, "Ayam Allah." It's like Kitab Allah, Bayt Allah, Rasul Allah. When you attribute something to Allah, it it raises up. It becomes Abdullah. You know, it becomes a great. It honored. So Allah says, remind them of these days and what happened in these days and the people who lived in these days and the believers who struggled in these days. And this is Muharram, Musa والسلام, and all the believers struggled and Muhammad وسلم, and the plan for Hijrah and yeah, it happens also in Muharram. But because of we try to learn more about Sayyidina Musa والسلام, many, many stories in the books of Hadith about the followers of Musa. Quickly, inshallah, one of them about the travelers. There were three travelers. The Prophet ﷺ tell the story. Three travelers from the previous believers before Islam. And camels, horses, donkeys, no planes, no you know cars, no trucks. And there's no hotels, no roads, you know. So you have to every night break, stop. Yeah, you carry on, break, stop, carry on. And when you're traveling in the desert and between countries, can you imagine how wild it is? They have to look for a cave. Subhanallah. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even designed the mountains full of caves, shelters. Yeah? So they look for a cave, clean up, and that's how the Prophet ﷺ received revelation. He was in a cave. Yeah? How he hid in the journey to Hijrah, he was in a cave. Subhanallah, we just, we, what happened to us? We just find the motel, find the hotel, call somebody in the city and yeah, get a mattress and uh, how many different blessings we have that unimaginable 200 years ago. 200 years ago, unimaginable about flying, unimaginable about the speed train, unimaginable about the, you know, what about 50 years ago, 30 years ago? with the internet, with the mobile phone. It's unimaginable that they can have a free video call across the world with so many people. You think this is only co millionaires and corporates can do that. Allah gave it to everybody. It's not for free. Allah says you will, you will be compared. <laughs> you, don't, you don't take it for granted because Muhammad Sallallahu will be standing and we will be standing in the same queue and he will be asked, what did you eat? He said, dates and water. For how long? Weeks and weeks. And he'll turn to us, what did you eat? If the same food come a second day, I'm, I'm going to eat the same thing again, I ate the test today. <laughs> you know, you have to alternate, you have the schedule. Chicken, fish, meat, lamb, and then ask the kids, what do you like to eat? What do you want from dessert? What do you want? Yeah? And we eat and we don't say Alhamdulillah. And we eat and we complain and we eat, we say, mm, so and so get better. And you watch what's on TV and you watch what's on the internet and you compare yourself. Yeah, and you say, oh, I'm not as lucky as they are. This shaitan trick in this time, very difficult time. So these three people hid in a cave for the night so they can rest. And while they're inside, a storm started, a very bad storm that rocks falling off the mountain. And they found themselves stuck inside that cave with rocks piling in front of the cave. You can't go out. No light coming in. It becomes so dark inside, no light coming in. There's no one, one, one. There is nothing to call for rescue but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one. He is the one. He is the one. Truly. You know? When you're in difficulty, and every one of us have difficulty like this, that they find themselves like in darkness. So upset. So disturbed. So, you know, so hurt. And they, they, they just, what can I do? And shaitan will trick you and say, just watch TV, relax. <laughs> you know, just, just do this, you relax. 
the Prophet ﷺ used to rush, just make wudu, just pray to rak'ah, just fall down in sajda. You need, yeah? You need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many, many situations. Those people thought the same way. They looked at each other and said, look, wallahi nothing, nobody will help us today but Allah. And nothing will help us with Allah except what you did for Allah. Very tricky question. Put 100 line under this one. What you did for Allah, it has to be 100% sincere for Allah to listen to you or look at you. If you did it because your mom looks and says, MashaAllah, my son is so good. Or for the teacher, or for your friends, or for your neighbors, or for the people in the masjid. If you did it for all that, it just tarnishes. You know, Allah says, He's making me equal to, you know, to his parents. He's making me equal to the people. He's making me equal to, yeah, like, this is very sad, but this also, shaitan is never asleep. Shaitan is always tricking. Even when you pray, he wants to look at it, make you pray something else. Even when you pay zakah, and you pay in Sadaq, and you have really, really good intention, he wants you to, to lose some of the good deed. Because it's a treasure. He wants to steal it away from us. So these people said, only sincere, 100% for Allah will benefit you. So remember something you did in your life. So they go in the corner, everyone in a corner, and just thinking, what have I done in my last 20 years? What have I done that actually Allah may accept it? Yeah? What have I done? And that's the question everyone of us asks all the time. What have I done in my life that Allah may accept? And then I hope in that good deed, oh Allah, please, because of that good deed, help me out, help my son, help my daughter, help my mom, my, mom, my dad, whatever it is you want to ask Allah for. Yeah? So inshallah, tomorrow I'll tell you what did they say, because they remembered the good deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them miracles in this case. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our iman, increase our taqwa and knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from harm and difficulty. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us reason for this help and reason for the happiness of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.